Hello everyone and happy St. Patrick's Day or happy St. Patrick's Day plus one. Welcome to this Jameson Cocktail Masterclass. My name is Jessie and I have with me the lovely Victoria and I'll be joining you today as well Jessie and I'll also be monitoring the chat so any questions you have, anything you want to tell us, um, let us know where you're joining from, let us know what your favourite cocktail is, all let us it. know your plans for tonight, yeah. anything at all, drop it in the chat and I will make sure we and answer ask it. Ask us questions, we love questions. What's Victoria's favourite cocktail? Let's find out. Pop it in the chat, we love to know what you are up to. Um, we have lots of different bars that are joining us this evening, so if you're joining us from Suede or Six Barrels or the Berliner in Nottingham, or if you're joining us from Leicester, from Firebug or Duffy's, or if you're joining us from Cheltenham, from Under the Prom, everybody welcome. Welcome. You will all have received a lovely kit, a little Jameson box. Don't worry if you didn't get one, but oh, it's, it's coming, it's coming. We have a <laughs> lovely Jameson kit, something like, <laughs> like this. this. <laughs> that was very smooth, very well planned. I was a little bit nervous how much for a second. rehearsed there. that today, Jasmine. Well, you're such a good So catch. many times. Excellent throw as well from behind the camera. Thank you, behind the camera, Elf. Thank you very much. So, guys, you will have received one of these gorgeous little Jameson St. Patrick's Day kit that includes everything, or nearly everything, that you need to make two drinks. Now, what drinks are we going to be making? So, we're going to be making two drinks, the JGL and the Irish coffee. Amazing. No pressure on that one. Oh, no, that's um, my one. I'll run you through everything that you should have so we make sure we've got everything ready to go. Yep. So you should have your Jameson, um, your Jameson whiskey, you should have your dehydrated limes, Ooh. you should not drop that every time <laughs> you come near it, um, you should have two glasses uh, but you'll only be needing one unless you're sharing something today, um, you'll have some ginger ale, you'll have some coffee and you will have some sugar. Um, you will also need a heat proof glass yep. um, and like this. some double cream. Yeah, we're going to talk you through everything that you need for the Irish coffee a bit later on, but just a little bit of warning, you know, maybe get the kettle going, perhaps if you like making, you know, um, slow press coffee, something fancy like that, you can start making it now. And yeah, we've got a little double walled glass here, which is a tempered glass, okay, so we know that this is heat proof. If you haven't got one of these at home, we recommend using a mug, don't yeah, we, absolutely. you know, much rather be safe than sorry, don't want anyone burning their hands. And make sure you've got that double cream ready to go, and some sugar as well, but again, We'll remind you of all of that later. Before you open the double cream, a good tip <gasps> oh. is to shake it so you get some aeration Ooh, in there and it makes it slightly shout. thicker. I wish um, you so told you me that before, Victoria. <laughs> Thank you. No pressure. I thought it would be more fun this way. I thought, I'm yeah. sure you would. We love the element of risk. <laughs> yes, guys, I will be making the Irish coffee, okay? Victoria's decided to cop out of that one, apparently, Well, she lost this a lot of rock, paper, scissors, so here we are. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry guys. Lisa. We'll have to see how it goes. There's a little bit of pressure, okay? Floating that cream on the coffee doesn't always go right every time. I am genuinely nervous. If I'm honest guys um, but we're gonna give you some tips yeah <laughs> thank you we're gonna give you some tips as to how you can make it really easily at home and if it doesn't if it doesn't work out don't worry about it but we will get onto that later yeah. won't we so, so we've been talking stuff. for a little bit we have yeah, painfully sorry. aware that you don't have a drink yet so shall we crack on with the first I drink? I think so yeah I'm thirsty so what are we making so we're gonna kick off with the JGL which is one okay. of my favorite JGL uh, what does that sound like? Jameson ginger ale and lime Ooh, okay that sounds so. pretty acme named Jameson ginger ale and lime, lime. so JGL Amazing. Okay. Very easy. Other stuff. <laughs> um, so what you're going to need is if you've got your little Jameson bottles, you can just use a whole one of these because it's 50 mils. Uh, okay. um, if you've got a whole bottle and you want to keep the minis because you collect them. It's like, so cute. Like it's I so do. Cute. I yeah. collect them. Yeah. Of course she does. Of course. My housemate hates me. I have my house full of minis. Just minis everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> ah, they're only small, you know. It's fine. Even, even a car. Mini. <laughs> <laughs> um, the oh, magically moving oh, away. It's disappearing. <laughs> Amazing, a little camera magic. elf. <laughs> um, Thanks, camera elf. So, if you have the mini bottle, just the entire bottle straight in. If you have the big one and have something to measure with, like a jigger, just pour it to the top. You need 50 milliliters. So that is a double measure, that isn't is it? A so that's measure. a healthy measure, as we say. Nice, and responsible, but healthy in. measure. Look at that. I can actually already smell the I whiskey know. in the studio. It's so good. I really get like... Toffee, like orchard fruits. Orchard fruit, apple, yeah, orchard yeah, fruit. That smells incredible. Really fresh, I think it's yeah. a really fresh smell. Yeah. So once we've added the whiskey, we're going to add plenty of ice. What is it we like to say, Jesse? Ice is nice. Indeed, why is that? Little catchphrase. Well, um, you might think it was the opposite, but when you're making a drink, the more ice you add to it, the slower it's going to dilute, so the better your drink is going to stay for longer. And I used to think when I would order a drink in the bar, I'd say, oh, can I have, you know, just, just a few cubes of ice? Because I thought that way the drink wouldn't dilute as much and it would say, you know, a bit stronger for longer. But actually, it's the opposite of opposite. that. Yeah. Indeed. So the more ice you have, the colder your, your vessel your will be, your yeah. glass. So the 
the better the overall experience, really, won't it? Absolutely. So, it's a lovely stuff. So, um, almost the last step, we're going to yeah. top up with ginger ale. And I'm mm. always going to try not to hit the ice because you don't want to lose the carbonation, which is, ah, that's you don't want to lose the bubble. That's a good tip. Um, and then I'm going to give it a very gentle stir because, again, I don't want to so we're just lose kind of carbonation. Lifting the whiskey so it's more, yeah. Sits, yeah. So, so it's nicely mixed. Feel free at this point to add more ice if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, but I always like to leave a nice gap at the top. It's called a wash line. Okay. Um, the reason we do this is so when the drink starts diluting, it doesn't over flood and it doesn't look so busy. So you have room to like, if you were, I mean, if anyone Friends, remembers being out in bars dancing. and clubs with music, you know. Yeah, see, look how that easy that looks. Yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> I miss being out. Um, anyway, sorry. Anyway. Oh, Jesse, we all do. <laughs> Don't, Victoria. Then I have some fresh lime because I think fresh is best. Mm -hmm. However, if you do have dehydrated lime, it will work just the same. And I'll give you some tips on dehydrated fruit in a second. Oh, lovely. But what I'm going to do here, and if you have a fresh lime, yeah. do it with me. Um, I squeeze it so you get all the juice Ooh, nicely uh, out, and then I just drop it in. So that really is, it's an ingredient, not just a garnish, like I, the it's lime a bit of juice. Both. Yeah, and I okay. think, actually, it's only a, a few drops that come out, but, but I think it really makes though. a difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there you have it, JGL, easy, that, simple. That was so easy, and also, Fish, bash, bash. <laughs> I kind of wouldn't expect a whiskey drink to look so refreshing. You think of kind of dark... So like I always drink. think that this drink is one for the for the whiskey lovers and the non whiskey drinkers. Uh, okay, it's um, like an intro. That's yeah. what I was saying yeah. earlier. It's the drink that got me into drinking whiskey. Ah, well, they go um, all down there from there. All, all down downhill. There. <laughs> <laughs> Won't change a thing though. Obviously. <laughs> um, Amazing. So because it's so refreshing and it works in summer, it works in winter, yeah. it works all year round. Um, really, really delicious. No, I'm, stuff going, well, I'm going to try. Enjoy it. it. <laughs> enjoy it. I'll just be over here mm. being very jealous. Good. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, slantry everyone, cheers. If you've slantry, made so it, good. we want to see your pictures, okay? Um, take pictures of the drinks you've made, if you're having a nice time, you and your housemates, your partner, whatever, get them on Instagram, and you can tag the, um, the bar or the restaurant that you bought these kits through, and make sure that you tag at Jameson UK and use the hashtag join in, and that way we can have a look at the pictures. We like to see if, you know, our hair was looking okay or if everyone was having a nice time. <laughs> So yeah, fantastic stuff. Does my hair look okay? It looks fantastic. <laughs> it looks fantastic. That was really delicious. Did you enjoy? Yes. Obviously. I think it's a good time to tell everyone a little bit about Jameson since they're enjoying their Obviously. JGL. Oh, well, there you go. Well, we hope we hope you're enjoying your JGL, definitely. But yeah, we, we, we've got a couple of fun facts to tell you whilst you kind of have some time to enjoy your drink, you know, before we get ready to make our next serve. And obviously you have enough in your box to make two of these lovely drinks. So if it's just you on your own or if you want to save one for later, just remember what everything that we've mentioned will we'll remind you at the end, okay? Um, but yeah, you've got the opportunity to have another one later. Lucky people. Yeah, so we'll run really quickly through what, what was in there, yep. just in case anyone missed it. Yep, definitely. So it was 50 millilitres of Jameson, which means your entire mini bottle to the top, then ice all the way up, because the more ice, the better the drink. Ice is nice. Then we topped with ginger ale, leave a nice little gap at the top, and then we add it, we squeeze a bit of lime and dropped it in. Otherwise, you can use your dehydrated fruit. And I promised I would actually give some. You did. I was going to say I want I want tips. this tip. So, so hit me up. Um, I love dehydrated fruit, but it's a strange thing so to love. Reasons. But okay. <laughs> no, but have you ever dehydrated fruit at home? No. Well, that's why you don't know about it. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> um, so listen. I'm okay. All right, Mum. Jeez. Oh. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Um, so, if you have fruit that's about to go off and you don't really know what to do with it, ah, okay. chop it very, very thinly and put it in the oven. Yeah. Unless you've got an air fryer, you can also use that. I actually do. Got or for Christmas. you're maybe. fancy and have a dehydrator. Ooh, um, no. So, chop it very, very thin and okay. put it in the oven on low heat and leave it for hours, anywhere between 9 to 12 hours. Oh, wow, a long time. But it will, okay. yeah, it will dehydrate. But if you do it with apples and strawberries and yeah. so on, they need slightly less time, but they also become crisps. Oh, and you know, I've seen those in like fruit. fancy health food shops. Yeah, that you can do it delicious. with kale as well. Oh, delicious. Well, go. So good. Cool. Um, so that's you thought you were coming for Jameson cocktails, and really it was, it was life, life advice and baking <laughs> advice. So there you go. Well, that is a good little tip. And also, that's a great way to use up your um, fruit that's going to go yeah, off. I just think know. sometimes I buy for all these cocktails, and I, and yeah. I overestimate how much lime I might need. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I just, and do you know what? It smells incredible when you're dehydrating Ooh, okay. it. Who needs candles when you're just dehydrating your own limes? <laughs> As you were, Victoria. Oh, well, there we go. Thank Where you. were we? Yeah. Well, lovely stuff. Well, as you are enjoying your lovely Jameson ginger and lime, whether that's with your dehydrated fruit that you now know how to make at home, or with fresh lime, um, we have some fun facts for you. But we need some audience participation, guys. We have a question for you. Now, John Jameson, the founder of, of course, Jameson Whiskey, the world number one Irish whiskey, okay? John Jameson. 
question for the audience. Pop the answers in the chat, okay, and Victoria will be able to see how you're getting on. Where did John Jameson come from? Or where was he from? Where was he from? Where was he from? Where was John Jameson from? Where did you come from? Where did you go? <laughs> you going to sing for me? No, absolutely. Well, she not. might if you ask long enough. <laughs> well, um, there you go. Question in the chat. Where was John Jameson from? Where did he come from? Okay. Put the answers in the chat. I'll give them a small clue. It is Ooh. a trick question. Ooh. Oh, um, gosh, I'm concerned. I don't know the answer. <laughs> Um, well, there you go. Well, to take oh. off the stress, I can tell them the answer. Oh, okay. The <laughs> okay. Um, well, there you go. But yeah, That's it's it's more obvious than you might think, but it is a slight trick You're giving question. too many hints now, Sorry, I think. Be... Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we will reveal the all to be revealed at the end. But there you go. So yeah, John Jameson, our founder, he opened the doors of the Jameson Distillery in Dublin in 1780, okay? And we have been making this beautiful liquid and, you know, variations there above. We can talk to you about those later. Since 1780, okay? And um, have you been to Dublin? Have you been to the James? I haven't experience? actually. Oh, well, um, it's on my bucket list. It's on your bucket list. As okay, when we're we allowed to go, again, yeah. well, I'll take you. It will be fantastic. Okay, if you've been, let us know in the chat again. We love if you've got the, if you're a Jameson fan, the Dublin experience in. Um, sorry, let me try that again. The Dublin experience. The James. <laughs> Obviously, I've had too many Jamesons, guys. The Jameson Dublin experience is fantastic. A really great way to kind of have an introduction to whiskey if you're not a huge fan or if you're a real aficionado and you want those kind of extra tidbits of information. Fantastic experience. But interestingly, we started off making Jameson in Dublin, but we aren't there anymore. So we have actually moved to Middleton in Cork. So a lot more kind of a countryside environment where we are making Jameson. And that is where our beautiful distillery is. And like I said, have you been to I haven't been to Middleton, but I have no. been to Dublin. So yeah. that's on my bucket list. So there you go. <laughs> that's like a good around. round trip. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, let's make a weekend yeah, of it. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Hope you all join us. <laughs> so we also have, Victoria, I have a question for you now. We've I'm had ready. audience participation. Now I need lovely, a uh, glamorous assistant participation. So we have on here, maybe if the cameraman can help me get this on the camera, let's have a quick look. We have the, fa oh, that's my face, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we have the Jameson family crest, okay? And there's a bit of a story behind this, Vic. What is the story? So this was awarded to the Jameson family after they fought off some pirates in the North Sea. That's so cool. I wish my relatives were that cool. Right. It's <laughs> just really, really um, cool. So yeah, so that was that's what that represents. Um, so they they fought with some, some pirates, and they were actually um, so they were they were awarded that. And then down below it says Sinemetu, which is Latin, um, and that transla translates to without fear, um, oh, which means okay. which is kind of a testament to how courageous and yeah. how um, brave they were to do that. So yeah. that's a bit of the background story. I feel like that's a motto that's Jameson. kind of got us from 1780, you know, through any like troubles and um, getting us right to where we are now, world number one Irish whiskey, I think without that family motto, without, without Cinema fear, Cinemato, there you go. I don't think we would be where we are today. Probably not. There you go. And speaking of other things that are really important to Jameson, you know, um, John Jameson was once asked, what is the most important person in your distillery? You know, is it the men who, who um, actually grow the grain that you need to make the whiskey? Is it the person who handles the distillation? And he said, all very important. However, the most important person to make Jameson is the barrel man. Now, barrel man probably doesn't mean much to you at home, but these were literally, back in 1780, these were the, the people who were carrying giant barrels of whiskey. We are talking huge barrels on their backs, okay, from the distillery onto horse and carts so that they could be transported around Ireland and eventually around the world. They're also referred to as barrel backs. Barrel occasions. backs. There you go. There you are. Oh, and actually, they've got a little barrel back in their kit, don't they? Oh, That's yeah, a little this barrel one. back there. Yeah. So the idea behind this, and I'll put it here so you can all see it, um, is that you'd be enjoying a glass of beer and that you would put a little shot of whiskey. You have two options. You can either drink it or you can pour it into your beer. A little barrel back. Well, a little there you barrel go. Back. But yeah, the barrel men were considered the most important part by, Jameson, uh, by John Jameson because at the end of the day, you can make the world's best Irish whiskey, but if it can't leave your distillery, you're in real trouble. Absolutely. So the barrel men were very important. And actually so important that if you look, take a look on the bottle, if you have a big one, oh, yeah. um, you will see at the very top, you will see the barrel back. Yeah. Um, and there's one there, it's quite hard to see in this light, but it is there, um, hopefully. I don't think it appears it. on the miniature bottles, but um, if you have a big bottle no, at home. it does not. But also, um, if you have one of the newer bottles, actually, which uh -huh. is my case, there's yes. also one at the very bottom, yeah. um, which actually I think you can see a bit better there. There you go, yeah. Um, 
So there we go. That's um, a little bit of Jameson history. A little history. nod towards yeah, the barrel absolutely. bats. Absolutely. Yeah. And these are just just some fun Jameson pub quiz facts. I don't know if you're all sick to the back teeth of uh, of pub virtual quizzes pub or quizzes. virtual pub quizzes. I know that I am. But no I do offense. miss the real yeah. ones. <laughs> yeah, I just you know just miss being with friends. But not long. You know, as long as it's safe and we're allowed to be out together, I am really looking forward to yeah, that. Me too. So, have we got any questions, Victoria? Uh, not so far. Lovely stuff. Cool. You must be doing a good job then. Fantastic stuff, if no one's got Ditto. any questions, there we go. Amazing, so how about we talk them through the Irish coffee, okay, the the drum roll. She made me do it, so I'm a bit nervous. Actually, before we do that, I oh. think I'd urge everyone to go boil their kettle if they haven't done so There you so go, already. I think that's what you need to be doing, that was my first reminder, <laughs> is that go and boil your kettle, and if you receive these kits, we actually sent you some little sachets of really high quality instant coffee, okay? Um, if you have like a Nespresso machine or one of those lovely French presses at home, you can make whatever kind of, you know, top quality coffee that you like. But if you've got one of the kits and got one of these things, how much water do you recommend they so add? So I'd say about 100 milliliters to one sachet, which okay. doesn't seem like a lot. And if you don't have anything to measure that with, those 100 milliliters, since you will have used 50 of this, Fill this up twice and you will have a hundred. Ah, yeah. um, Obviously, just be careful if you're filling the bottle up with hot water. Fill it up with cold no, first and then yeah, boil that's that. What I meant. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, so you, what you want is strong brew coffee and that yeah. is the trick of the Irish coffee. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, we do have something coming in through the chat. How exciting. And it's our audience getting oh. the question right bang on. Oh my goodness, what, don't, don't, don't tell them yet. Don't tell okay. them yet. I've got names as well, yeah. so we can, we, can, we, can, we can name to fame. Can name, name to fame? No, fame I can't say name, name and shame. Name and shame. <laughs> name name to, fame. to fame. We'll go with it, we'll go with it. So there you are guys, Vic has told you what you need to make that coffee and the coffee for your Jameson Irish coffee needs to be stronger and sweeter than your normal morning brew, okay? This is not like that first cup of coffee you have in the morning because the stronger and sweeter this coffee is, the better it's going to bring out the flavours of the whiskey. Um, and also, you had a top tip for me earlier, which I'm really glad you told me before this, that if you add that little bit more sugar, okay, it creates um, a, a, a increased density in the coffee that means that the cream we're going to put on top is more likely to float. It's just, it's just one of the ways to, to saving it. Yeah, um, yeah. So it just it means the coffee is slightly denser than the cream and yeah, it just yeah. allows for the separation. So how much sugar should they add then? So my preference is normally two to three teaspoons. Okay. Um, yep. Not heaped. So, you know, not you don't heaped. want... Level. You don't, you don't want coffee, just coffee syrup. Um, so about two, three teaspoons, okay. but then it depends on how you like your coffee. Um, if, you don't, if you find that you don't like cream, you can just make your coffee Irish. Sounds the cream. Sounds <laughs> the cream, yeah, responsibly, absolutely fine. Um, and if you've got the sachets that were included in the kit, the actual instructions that you've been sent say use like half one of those sachets, but I would say that's the minimum. I'd say if you're making it for one person, you just want round about two teaspoons of sugar. And if you haven't got a kit, we would say using brown sugar um, is the best way to complement that whiskey. So I would agree. I think I've probably uh, procrastinated long enough. Oh, the moment of truth is approaching. Might be time. Might be My heart is racing. Go. Actually, I've got a question. <gasps> Thank God. <laughs> okay, what's your question? Can you use whipped cream? Um, you can. You could. You definitely can. I have seen it done, but to be honest, it's the reason why we float the cream on top of this, okay, is to have that really lovely contrast when you have that hot coffee and then yeah. the cold cream um, really levels it out. And whipped cream obviously has far too much aeration to do Are you a same. mixer? Or I'm just not a mixer. Yeah, Absolutely not. You can mix it in if you like. And we don't then really have kind of cream in coffee in this country. That's a lot less of a thing. It's normally milk in coffee. Yeah, so. that's true. But but um, if that's but yeah, I'm like. not a mixer either. Well, we're, we're making cocktails at home. You do you. If it doesn't work, mix it in. Pretend it never happened. So <laughs> if you ma if you end up making a latte, well, you know it's an Irish latte, which is more than you can say you had a minute ago. Okay, I'll anyway, it's time, Jesse. Uh, it's time. Okay. So guys, <laughs> we are going to be using 40 mils of Jameson whiskey. So if you received one of the miniature bottles, okay, that is 50 mils, and that's going to have leave you about 10 mils left over, which actually is perfect for a little neat dram to have after it's this. The smallest dram ever. It is a pretty small dram, but it actually is really nice to be able to taste the whiskey neat. On its own. Appreciate Absolutely. the flavour profiles of it. So yeah, really, this is a three drink masterclass. Jameson ginger and lime, tiny dram. Um, what one this is called? <laughs> Irish coffee. Irish coffee. Thank you very much. Anyway, I was clear. I'm too It's going to float. <laughs> it's going to float, guys. Okay, so I am going to pour myself 40 mils of Jameson from here. Remember, if you're pouring from your bottle, from your miniature bottle, okay, you just need to leave yourself 
a tiny bit. Before you pour in the hot coffee, feels uh -huh. like a good time to remind everyone that if you that make sure you're using a heatproof glass. Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. That's a good point. If you haven't got a glass that is you know is tempered or is definitely yeah. heatproof, just use a mug and preferably yeah, like don't a be tempted mug. to use these. Don't use one these of these. These are those. for your JGLs. Not yeah, for your yeah. Irish coffee. We don't want anyone to be scolding their hands. Absolutely none of that. Um, but yeah, if you're using a mug, I would say try and use a small one because I know that we've got these whacking great big latte mugs yeah. in my house. Think small. Think those sort of you know posh espresso cups that you only get round when the family come out. <laughs> Something like that. So <laughs> the I china. have got the china, the posh <laughs> china. So I have got my whiskey in my glass, and what you want to do at this stage is get that sugar into the coffee and really stir it in. Okay, we don't want any kind of granules sat at the bottom. I've already done that. It's something I prepared earlier. In fact, I could give it a little stir. No, I have faith. So what I'm going to do is pour around about 100 to 150 mils of coffee in here. Okay, It depends on what your vessel looks like. But what you want to leave is ample room, obviously, to have a, a good little sort of finger's width of cream on top of it. Okay. So what we're going to leave on top is what we talked about, the dancing space. Yes, the dancing <laughs> space. You called it a wash line, yeah. didn't you? So round about that. Okay. So I'm going to pour out this. This glass actually has some nice little... Um, we call them fingers up the top. So I'm going to stop round about there. I think that's perfect for me. So can everyone see there? You've got enough perfect. space so we can add the cream. And yes, yeah, that little kind of fingers width, OK? Makes it look super profesh. I'm nervous. Moment of truth. It's time. Would you like it's a time. drum roll? I would like a drop. Oh, wait, I'd like a quick reminder for everyone who is floating the cream, OK? Quick reminder, give it a little whip. Not, not, we're not making whipped cream here, okay? We don't want it to be turning solid. Just gets a tiny bit of air in it. If you, if you haven't done what Vic said earlier, which was give it a little shake whilst the lid is still on, and then, okay. No, don't do it with the lid open. Ready? <laughs> I'm ready, guys. So what I'm going to do, just make sure that you can see this, guys, is I have my little teaspoon. I'm going to put it to the edge of the glass, just like that, and pour slowly down the back of the teaspoon, all right? And pouring nice and slowly, and what doing it down the back of the teaspoon allows is for you to Perfect. really control um, control that cream going onto there. Vic, is it working? Yeah, it is. Keep going. I've got my it? eyes closed. I'm too nervous. No, I'll tell you when to stop. Oh, look at that. She's um, a beauty. I'll get a little bit more over here. Look at that. Are you happy with that? That is Are you happy brilliant. with that level? I can't. Do you know what? I, I am happy. I can't say anything to you after this. I'm finished. giving myself a round of applause. That was perfect. Well, there we go, guys. If I can do it, anyone but can do it If you twist it, it slightly for everyone to see at home, this side is the elite oh, side. Oh, there no, we, go. There we go. That's much more aesthetically <laughs> pleasing. Let's pretend you didn't see this sort of... Oh, it's actually chunky picked. side. There, there we, we go. go. Look at that. But there you are. And if you manage to do this at home, you should be very proud of yourselves. But don't worry if you haven't, because it still tastes delicious, even if you mix it in. Um, and I, I almost want a little take a picture of my Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. But I would say if on. you at home would want to take this to the next level, Ooh. you absolutely don't have to. But if you have any nutmeg or any fresh <gasps> nutmeg lying around, fresh. Um, you can Ooh, grate some on okay. top. Um, and that, that will amazing. be incredible. Like a little kind of seasonal twist. I like the sound of that. That sounds amazing. It's just, yeah. it's one of the first things you smell when you try yeah. it. So, yeah. um, are you going to try this, Jessie? I am. I am. Are we oh, hoping for, quite, a, it's for, hot. for yeah, cream? There mustache? we go. Okay. We've got a little mustache. <laughs> there we that go. That wasn't terribly flattering, was it? <laughs> but that. Oh, was it yes. Good? It's, it really is that, do I have any cream? No, you're perfect. No, no, no. <laughs> Just before the cameraman zooms in and tells me that I've actually got cream all over my face. So I think it really is that contrast between that hot, sweet coffee and mm. that a lovely cold cream. The colder the cream, the better, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's I'm just very so good. It's such a good drink. If I'm honest, that's, I'm very That's proud of very good. I'm so, impressed. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but if you notice, the coffee is very dark colour because yep. it's so strongly brewed. Yeah. Um, so delicious. Lovely stuff. Great. And yeah, guys, make sure you're taking a picture of your achievements this evening. If you're having a lovely time, pop it on um, Instagram or on Twitter or on Facebook. And you can tag at Jameson UK and use the hashtag join, join in. in. And then, of course, you know, tag the, the bar or the restaurant that you bought this lovely kit from. Um, because it's just so nice to see everyone's faces, Absolutely. isn't it? You know? Yeah, we want to see how you've... Um, how you've Pull the evening together, yeah, like indeed. such a nice evening. Definitely, so. yeah. So, do we think it's time to give them the answer to the question? Actually, well, we've got peop we've got two people that have actually answered the question, oh. and they answered the question okay. correctly. Okay. Do you want to? Would you like me to give you a drum roll and you reveal the answer? So yes. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll remind everyone of the question, which is okay. where was John Jameson from? Okay. Ready? So he was actually from Scotland. 
and we've got um, Lindsay Pike that oh, got it right, well and we've done, also got Lindsay. Ezra Watson, and Ezra grows her own nutmeg. Ezra? Hey Ezra, nice to see you, can't wait to see you back in Six Barrels, hi, grow your own nutmeg. That's what? amazing, how do you do that? I didn't even know. I oh. I didn't even process how you grow nut. I've got to Google this afterwards. I need to know what a nutmeg grown yeah. plant looks like. Well, Ezra, I'm very impressed. Very, very I did, impressed. Do you know what? One of those things you never think where it comes from. Where do no. cloves come from? We'll Google it afterwards. Yeah, we'll look at it we'll later. Have a chat. Well, guys, we've clearly got some incredible Jameson fans at home. People who know that John Jameson was in fact Scottish. Scottish. World number one Irish whiskey made by a Scotsman. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us for this Jameson Masterclass. It has been a An real pleasure. pleasure. Yeah, really loved it. And Victoria, thank you so much for teaching me to make some drinks. And thank, thank you very you. much for showing me, putting me to shame on all my Irish coffees. I'm, I'm very proud of myself, to be honest. But, um, but guys, thank you so much. Happy St. Patrick's Day, plus one. one. And <laughs> Slancha, it's been so lovely to spend the time with you. And yeah, hope to see you soon. Cheers, everyone. In real life. Indeed. Cheers, Cheers guys. Jessie. Cheers, Cheers, Victoria. Oh, I'm going to get cream all over my face. <laughs>